Hello everyone, Pastor Angie here. Happy Thursday. I hope you are healthy. I hope you are safe and I hope that you are staying warm here on this chilly Thursday afternoon. One of the things that I am just so excited about these days is all of the creative ways that I have watched the body of Christ minister and serve and The thing that I really feel called to talk about is unity today. And so unity is the word for our daily devotion this afternoon. Our scripture reading when it comes to being united and staying united is John chapter 17. When Jesus is praying to God, Jesus says the goal and the prayer is for all of them to become of one heart and one mind, just as you, Father, are in me and I in you, so that they might be one heart and one mind with us. And so we know that John 17 is that most beautiful, one of the most famous prayers where Jesus is praying at first for himself and praying to the Father, and then he prays for his disciples, and then he prays for the church, and then he prays for the world. Um, And so this is Christ's prayer for us to stay united as believers. And I think the thing that really grieves Christ's heart even now is to see all of the divisions, to see all of the fractures and the splits that have happened throughout time. I think every time that Um, There is a new denomination formed because people cannot stay united and um, with charity for one another, with acceptance with one another, with understanding for one another. It breaks the Lord's heart. And the thing that I think that we do so well in a crisis or we can do really well as humans in a crisis is it really reminds us that we are all in this together, that we are stronger together than we are apart, that united we stand, divided we fall. And so the the thing that has really blessed me um, throughout my ministry, but especially right now in this global pandemic with so much uncertainty and so much hardship is the church as a whole, the ecumenical church as a whole, coming together as the body of Christ to serve and to minister. And I want you to know some of the ways that I have seen that unity manifest in the last couple of days. Our churches, all of our Billings Methodist churches, there's five in Billings, Montana. We have continued to work together to collaborate with one another But when this pandemic hit and when we knew we needed to close our buildings and have online worship, um, we decided that we would do one big collaborative service. And it has gone so well um, for lots of reasons. One, we have not one but five gifted pastors who have gifts and graces and talents and spiritual giftings that allow us all to lead um, in different ways and minister in different ways. So it ends up being even better than we could have imagined um, in terms of doing things on our own. The second thing that I just think has been so such a blessing for us to stay united is instead of like some pastors competing with one another and saying, well, what are you doing more? What are you doing less? Or who's better than who or whatever? And all of us are guilty of doing that. We have been supporting each other, checking in with one another. We've been doing weekly, sometimes biweekly um, Zoom calls with one another as clergy coming together and knowing that we get it on a level that not everyone can, that this is hard to pastor and minister in this time. And so that has been a really wonderful thing. Um, It's also really fun to get to witness the creativity of people who worship in different churches. Um, Melissa Fulton, um, one of my dear friends in Billings, her family worships at Shiloh United Methodist, and that's on the West End. 
And her and her son, they had this amazing idea to spread joy with rainbow hearts on the uh, doors of their church. And they did it on the doors and the windows of their house. Um, And so she asked me yesterday if they could come up to Hope and spread a little love and joy on the Hope doors, um, the glass doors that we have. And they did. And it looked so wonderful. And it just really was such a beautiful reminder of knowing that we are a church family at Hope United Methodist Church, but we are a part of the bigger corporate family, um, the church, the cap- capital T, capital C church, and um, that there are so many people that are praying for us, that love us, and people that we know, and even people that we don't know. Um, and the final thing that I'm just so excited about is um, our wonderful creative idea that we have for our Palm Sunday, um, which is another dear friend, Antonia Craighill, who came up with this idea. And it is to have everyone from all of our churches um, receive a palm branch and for them to either record themselves or take a photo of themselves holding their palm branch. And we are going to put together a slideshow to play an online worship of everyone all throughout Billings and all the places that they live waving their palm branch, you know, pictured with their palm branch. And it's going to show our unity of, of our unity in Christ, um, that we might all be different. We might all come from different backgrounds, but we all love the Lord and we all can be there for each other in this time. And so um, I really want to challenge us to continue to work with believers from various faith traditions. Another scripture that really reminds me of this idea of of focusing on unity instead of division, especially in this time, is Colossians 1, 20. And through him to reconcile himself, all things, whether things on earth or things in heaven, by making peace through his blood shed on the cross. And so that is what we are celebrating soon on Easter Sunday is what Christ did for us on the cross. And through his resurrection, Christ was able to reconcile reconcile the world, reconcile all things to himself. And so why can't we reconcile with one another? Um, And so my question for you is, how do you see in our community competition among other Christians or among other churches affecting unity? Are there fellow believers that you would rather prove wrong or disagree with than utilize their gifts and work together? What are your attitudes towards ecumenicism? unity and oneness in the body of Christ. So to be ecumenical is just a fancy word for people of various denominations, um, various faith traditions within Christianity. Um, So Catholicism, there's Roman Catholic, there's Eastern Orthodox, there's Protestantism, and then within Protestantism, there's Baptist, there's Lutheran, there's Presbyterian, there's Methodist, um, there's you know, Wesleyan, there's EV free, there's all kinds of various faith traditions. Um, and so what is your experience of all churches working together in oneness in Christ? Um, I think my prayer, especially for this time and how we can walk away from this pandemic when, um, things do get better is that we will be transformed because we might realize that we have a lot more in common than we have that, separates us and we can work together um, even though we might see a few things um, differently and so um, I love that in this YouTube channel this movement of daily devotions we don't just have Methodists that are listening in to daily devotionals but we have Catholics that are listening in we have Presbyterians that are listening in we've got Lutherans listening in We've got people who are like, I don't even know what I believe, but I just, I'm encouraged by these listening in and all throughout the gamut. Um, And I think that that's the important thing. Um, During a time of crisis, we um, see the very best in people or we see the very worst in people. And the very worst is for us to fear, to um, just really like kind of lean into scarcity and to also um, just divide and run. And the best is to unite, to promote healing, 
um, to remember that we are better together and that it's all about love and it's all about the love of God. Um, And so that is my hope for all of us, that we would find something um, that is maybe an ecumenical movement in our community, whether it's a nonprofit that lots of different faith traditions support. Um, We have Family Promise coming up at our church um, April 12th through the 19th. And I know Family Promise assists families who are experiencing homelessness in Yellowstone County. And the Catholics next door help out with it. The Presbyterians down the road help out with it. The Lutherans, the Baptists. It is absolutely an ecumenical movement. Um, So maybe that's something that you would want to get involved with during this time is to donate your time or donate your money to a nonprofit that all of our brothers and sisters and siblings in Christ um, are participating in and are supporting. Um, I love you all. I would love to hear how you are experiencing uni- unity as the body um, because really, truly, when we experience hardships, um, one of the good things about it is the things that we used to obsess about and the things we used to worry about and the things that we used to um, really kind of take over our time and our thoughts, they just don't matter anymore. They just don't. Um, And the most important thing that matters is our relationships with each other and our relationships with God and everything else kind of does truly fall by the wayside. So go out, love each other, be kind to one another. And remember, we are all in this together, united in Christ. Bye.